And, and today, what I want to do, we're going to look at just a few lines um, about the life of Jesus and his interaction with some people. And inside of those lines from Jesus, uh, we're going to find one sentence that is one of those remarkable sentences uh, that Jesus had this knack for being able to say a lot with a very few words. Uh, Jesus wasn't the guy who needed to hear himself talk, right? Any of you know somebody, they just need to hear themselves talk, right? It might be you. I mean, it's fine. It might be me, right? I mean, a lot of you think it's me every Sunday at this time, but okay, and I get it, right? But Jesus, he didn't need to hear himself talk. I mean, Jesus, he, he, he could be remarkably concise. He could paint a great picture. He could narrow down a story. I mean, he was an incredible storyteller. He could use objects from all around him to help people try and understand who he was, who his Father in heaven was, how the kingdom that, that he was bringing worked and functioned, what they were invited into. He, he's remarkable. And sometimes in one sentence, he could be so concise and bring so much together. And part of what we're going to find Jesus doing in this time is, is really in the middle of one sentence, given a really clear, but sometimes overlooked because we're looking for something else, statement about his vision for your life and my life. His vision for your life and my life. And you and I, were created to live with, with vision, with, with a why we're doing something and a way we're doing it, with a why we do something and a way we do it. And the, that why and that way, they, they've got to be connected. When, when we lose our why, we will lose our way. There, there's a something we're after, and there's a way in which we're designed to go about it. And that originates with Jesus. It's actually very primal for us. It's, we're, we're made to live on some sort of, of, of vision, on some sort of this is why, this is where we're going, why we're doing it. This is the way in which we're, we're going to do it. And Jesus, one sentence, boils some of that down for us. Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, we're going to start reading verse 18. Again, really glad you're here. Those of you joining online today, thanks for being a part of today. Let's dive into the scriptures a little bit. This is what, what happens, just the life of Jesus. Verse 18, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he sees two brothers, Simon, who is also called Peter, and that's what he's better known as, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen by trade and occupation. Verse 19, Jesus says, come, follow me, and I will actually send you out to fish for people. I love verse 20. It's astounding and overwhelming. At once, they left their nets and followed him. In a moment, they leave the family trade. They leave what they've been taught. They leave what they know. They leave the security of their future. They, they leave that, and they follow, they follow Jesus. Pretty, pretty remarkable there. There's one sentence in it. Did you hear the middle sentence, verse 19? Come and follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. I, I want to show it to you in one other translation that's a little more accurate, maybe word to word. This, this is what it says. It says, Jesus said, hey, follow me. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me. It's like a big arm wave invitation. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And inside of this little, I mean, it's one sentence. It's a handful of words. Inside of this one sentence, Jesus says, hey, this is what we're doing it. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And this, there's a way in which we're going to do it. This is what, we're, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to invite you to do what I'm doing. And this is why we're going to do that, and, and this is the way in which we're, we're going to do it. Jesus, in one like sentence, gives this, this vision for life. And look, this is the vision that's actually primal to us that we're made to live in. And all the other visions we get in our life, visions about our vocation, our trade, and how they function, visions about our family and what those should look like, and uh, visions about our friendship groups and how that should be, and visions about how we should engage in the communities which we live in around the world, all of those in their most healthy form, stem from this one vision that Jesus has for your life and my life, this, this overarching primal vision. See, see, Jesus' vision for your life is the primal vision of your life. You may not have identified it yet, but if you and I sat down long enough, we could ask each other enough questions 
that we, that, that we could figure out what, what, is, what the vision for your life is, whether you've identified it or not. You have a vision for your life. You do. You have a thing you are going for. It might feel like there's, there's 10 things, but I'm just telling you, those 10 support a one. You got a vision for your life. You may have never named it. You may have never identified it. You may even be averse to the language. I, I, don't, I don't want a vision for my life. I just kind of want to live my life. That's your vision. Right? I mean, you saw that. That was your vision, right? I'm just going to live my life. I want to do my thing. That's your vision. You, you've got a vision for your life. And, and yet, Jesus has this, this vision that's captured inside this one statement and this initial call of these people, this one statement. And Jesus' vision is the, it's the one we were made to live. It is the utmost importance. It's the one that gives meaning to all the other vision expressions of our life. It's the one that gives meaning to direction and choice. It's the one that gives meaning to, to what we define as success and how we define it and compartments of our life in which we define it. One sentence. And inside the sentence, we see a few things that, that tell us. Here, here's, here's this primal vision that Jesus invites us into. The first one is just that he wants to be with us. We just can't say it enough. He wants to be with us. Jesus wants to be with you. Jesus wants to be with us. Look, remember, it's, it's kind of an arm wave. Like, there's, there's, they're out on the water. They're casting the net, right? Jesus is walking the shore. Come on. Like, come on, follow me. Come, come follow me. And part of what you, we got to understand in that is that Jesus is, is, is viewed as a rabbi, like this, this teacher to them, right? Well, these people had, these these early followers, guys like Peter and Andrew, they had already been rejected by a bunch of other rabbis. They were viewed as not good enough for other rabbinical schools. That's why they're fishing. And Jesus comes along and says, forget all that. Come on, come on. I, I want to be, be, be with you. He, Jesus wants to, to be with you. You ever, you ever had the, the person in your life or the group of people in your life who regardless of who else wants to be with you or doesn't want to be with you, when they want to be with you, it just feels good. You just, when they want to be with me, it's game on. You'll do whatever it takes to be with them when they want to be with you. It, well, of my early childhood, one of the like, bigger than life figures in my life was, was my grandpa. We called him Pa, and he, he was just it for me and was the first person that really stepped into a father void in my life after my dad left. And and, and he wasn't like a physically big guy, but in my life, he was enormous. He, he was just huge. Like, and wherever he went, I wanted to be there. And I was fortunate enough to be able to spend a lot of time at their house. We, we were with them a lot. But if I was at their house, my, my pawn grandma's house, and, and I was doing something, it didn't matter what I was playing or what I was watching or whatever else. If, if he was going to go somewhere, if he headed for the back door in this tiny little house that they lived in, if he headed towards the back door and he said, hey, you want to come with me? The answer was always yes. I knew the arm wave and I knew the you want to come with me was a genuine invitation to be with him. And I knew it meant I was going to get to go where he went. I knew it meant I was going to get to ride in what I viewed as his big green truck. I knew life was good. Life was good in that moment because he wanted, like, he wanted to be with me. The what came after that in the first month was irrelevant. Can I just tell you, I remember very few places we went. Almost none of them. But I remember being asked. I remember being invited. I remember being wanted. This guy's bigger than life to me. He can do no wrong, say no wrong, be no wrong. Hey, you want to go with me? That's, that's Jesus in this, this moment. And even today, look, even today, I, I, don't, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you need to hear it for the first time or the millionth time, and it needs to soak in today. This is going to be God's greatest gift to you and everything else we do today. Even today, regardless of what your week has held, Jesus wants to be with you. In your darkness, in your brokenness, in your hurt, your frustration, your anger, your sin, in your wins, in your successes, in all of the positive momentum, today, Jesus wants to be with you. 
He wants to be with you and, in fact, despises the thought of being without you. So these guys, I mean, they're like, yeah, let's do this thing. Sorry, Dad, find somebody else for the family business. We're out. And they, they just drop what they're doing. They drop what they know. And they go and they, they start following him. They're going to be with him. But he, here's, where it's, here's where it starts to get, I mean, that's good. That, but that's a beginning point because here, here's where it starts to get really good. Is, is that witness leads to likeness. Witness leads to likeness. Come and, and follow me, and I, and I will make you. Jesus identifies right off the bat. Come and follow me. I want to be with you. And there is a transformation coming, and it's going to be good. There's, there's a difference-making quality of being with me, and it's going to be good. Come and, like, come on. Come on, follow me. Follow, follow me, and I will, I will make you. Lots of times we wonder, like, how, how do I become like Jesus? How do I become more like Jesus? How do I? It, it's... It's just repeatedly saying yes to come and follow me. It is the beginning, like, yeah, okay, come and follow me. And, and, and that means, like, you would forgive my sins, right? And you give me hope of heaven. And that's true. And that's like 1% of the invitation. It's like, come, come follow me, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you. I'm going to actually help you become like, like me. We all know this is true, right? The people you spend the most time with are the people you, you start to become like the most, right? That's why if you're married and you got marriage trouble, you, you got to get some help now because you're, you're becoming like the person you're really mad at, right? I mean, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble, but that's just what it starts to happen, right? They can't do anything. Certainly, you, Suddenly, you become the person that also does the same thing, right? Why? Because you become like, you start talking like the people you hang out with, gestures, jokes, right? It just, it just happens. It, and Jesus knew it. It's, it's part of who Jesus is. These people who, who we know, like, they, they, they become what we call disciples. The, the word they would have, would have used was this Hebrew word, Talmudim, which means that's what you and I get for, for disciples, and the Talmudim was, was really interesting because uh, uh, Talmudim, they, they actually would start to follow a, a rabbi because they did become convinced, right, that, that maybe they could start to become like, like that, that rabbi. And they would actually, they, they would actually like follow so close. And it's known about these early disciples, these Talmudim of Jesus, that they would follow Jesus so close and so consistently they would just, wherever he went, they're just, they're just hovering. You kind of get the image that they weren't good with personal space, okay? It's always like close quarters. It's always like they're just, they're right there. When Jesus is walking down the road, they are following so close behind, and they're trying to get right up beside. They even have moments where they argue about who's going to walk closest, right? They talk about it as it's in eternity, but it's kind of right now. Who gets to walk closest? Who gets to walk by Jesus' right hand today? No, no, you didn't brush your teeth well this morning. I'm going to walk by Jesus today. Right? Okay, it's all this, all this jockeying for position, right? That's the, that's the Talmudim. They, they want to be like him. They would walk so close that what was customary is that they would literally become covered in the dust of that rabbi. You, you just picture Jesus walking down this, this road, this dry desert road, Dust constantly kicking up from his sandals. And these Talmudim, they're pressed in so close because they want to hear every word. They want to see every facial expression. They want to try and catch every motive. They, they, want, to, they want to begin to understand every expression of power, every, every display of patience, every breath of peace. They, they want to get as tucked into that as, as they possibly can. And so they would literally be like covered in the dust of this of this rabbi, Jesus, becoming like him. They're not so interested in just learning about him. They're not just so interested in, in learning, like about the history of Jesus and, and what Jesus might do. They, they, they literally, they, they want to become like him. A Talmudim doesn't necessarily just want to learn about the rabbi. They want to become like the rabbi. 
They literally want, listen, so here's the invitation of Jesus. Hey, come on, come on, follow me, and then just keep following me and press in real close, just press in real close, and over the course of time, you're going to become more and more like me. Listen, Jesus' vision for your life does not end with let me forgive you to get you to heaven. Jesus' vision for your life starts with please take my forgiveness so that I can help you become like me. I can actually help you become like me. You, I could help you become like me in how you see the world. I could help you become like me in how you see yourself so that what we sang earlier about you being a son and a daughter and chosen and not abandoned and not forsaken and not rejected, you could literally live with a confidence and assurance of that. I want you to come and follow me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you, I'm going to actually help you become like, like me. I'm not going to, as many rabbis of the day would have done, I'm not just going to teach you things constantly and then try and convince you that you actually can't attain them. I'm not going to teach you so much and lord it over you that because you're less than, I actually want to help you become like me. Let me just ask you, when you think about relationship with Jesus, whether you're in one, whether you're exploring one, or want nothing to do with Jesus, when you think about relationship with Jesus... Do you picture it? It's, it's somebody who would forgive you, die for you, try and give you some insurance to avoid hell and, and be kind to you when you need it? Or do you picture it like Jesus pictures it, that you actually get to get so in sync and in step with Jesus that he would value witness so much that it would lead to likeness and you would actually find yourself becoming more like Jesus. Today in this moment, you and I, we are becoming more and more like someone. Jesus, come on, come, 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 come follow me. Come, come on, let's, let's go follow me. Every, every breath, day in, day out, every breath, come every moment, follow me into your workplace, follow me into your school, follow me into your neighborhood, follow me into your home, follow me into your, because I'm going to make you, I'm going to help you become like me. So, so this, this actually becomes, I mean, this is part of what Jesus is dreaming about, envisioning for your life. So this statement becomes true. We follow Jesus to become like Jesus. We follow Jesus to become like Jesus. Please hear me. Not for a millisecond do I want to minimize forgiveness and grace and the opportunity to begin the relationship with Jesus. But forgiveness and grace are too grand of expressions to be the end of something. They're the beginning of something. They're the beginning of this transformation to being like him. We, we follow Jesus to become like Jesus. Peter got it, one of the first guys. Like He drops the net and starts following Jesus. He starts to get this over the course of time. There's a story a little bit later where Peter's been following Jesus for a little bit, and Peter and some of the other disciples, these Talmudim, they're, they're in this boat, and it's really stormy, and Jesus comes walking on the water towards them, okay? Which, that enough, that, that, that's enough to like be its own story, okay? Just this thing. But Peter sees that it's Jesus coming and has the audacity to say, hey, Jesus, if it's really you, I, like, ask me to come to you on the water. And so Jesus says, okay, come on. Let, let's, let's go. Come on out on the water. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. Peter gets out of a boat and starts walking on the water because he is coming to grips more and more with the truth that he is actually becoming like Jesus. He and Jesus are becoming so one, so in sync, so in step, so enmeshed that he's actually living in the power of Jesus. He's not, listen, Peter isn't walking on water because of the power of Jesus out there somewhere. 
Peter is walking on water because of the power of Jesus in him. He's literally becoming like Jesus. And then, like, you might know the story. He sinks. Like, Peter, like, falls. He starts noticing everything around him, whatever else. And what happens in the moment? Jesus doesn't have an epic failure in the moment. And Peter honestly doesn't have an epic failure in the moment. He has a moment of reality. He forgets that he's becoming like Jesus. And his mind clicks instantly back to Peter with no Jesus. And that's an anchor. It's a quick one. But Peter walked on the water, not just because he thought Jesus was amazing in power, but because he was beginning to understand, wait, I am becoming like this rabbi, which was the vision of the rabbi. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? You're like, of course, it's, it's, it's obvious. Like in, and in head knowledge and theory, maybe you're assenting to it already today. You're like, okay, wait, yep, I, I knew that or I've forgotten that or that's new to me. What Jesus would actually want me to, to, be, to be like him, which goes way beyond Jesus just tolerating you or putting up with you or dealing with you or whatever. It, it also goes way beyond Jesus being worth your tokenism. Right? It goes way beyond Jesus being worth like some empty religious observances, cultural Jesus following, right? But it sounds so like, well, of, well, well, of course, okay, that, okay, I get it. But man, there's so much tension here. Let me take you back just a couple of weeks to where we were in this series when we talked about these two kingdoms. There's this kingdom of the, the world that is definitely a play. And when the kingdom of the world's at play in our life, the self is king. And then there's, in contrast to that, there's this kingdom of God where, where God is, on the, is, is king. Jesus is king. And these two kingdoms are in constant battle. That's why Jesus pray, Jesus taught us to pray, keep on praying that the kingdom of God would come and be done on earth just like it is in heaven. And see, you and I, we, we are living in a kingdom. Even in this moment, we're living in a kingdom. And somebody is king. It's either Jesus or it's you. And here's the thing about kings. Kings often tend to like it when everybody else is like them. Jesus isn't the only king that's offering to help other people become like him. When you're living like king, you're doing that too. And here, here's, here's where it gets just slightly awkward. Just brace yourselves for a minute. When we're living like king, we're actually doing that to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, you, you, no, Jesus, you become like me. I am so grateful for forgiveness and grace. Now, look, I got these things I'm working on over here. I got these dreams. I got these desires. Jesus, would you, the, uh, Jesus, like, if you would take kind of your desires and mesh them into mine, if you would take your, your dreams and, like, put them inside of my dreams, we could really get something done together, Jesus. Well, I mean, we could go. We, we'd get some game on, okay? Jesus, like, when you and I live like king, and it's, look, it's, it's so subtle. So that's why this is a constant check thing, right? That's why the invitation to come follow me is all the time. Jesus is saying over and over, come follow me, 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 because the pull is always back the other way. You have a natural drift, and so do I. It is always away from Jesus as king. She said, come follow me, and I'll, I'll make you fishers of men. Like, let, let, me, let me be king. So while it sounds obvious and it sounds simple, it's just helpful for us to know there's a tension. There, there really is a pull in two directions. But, here, but here's, here's what's true. Here's what, here's what could be true about, true about you. Here's, here's what could be true about me is, is that we would be able to say, I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. Jesus. Do I follow Jesus because one day I want to spend eternity with him in a place of heaven, whatever that? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But again, that's the beginning. That's not the end game. That's the beginning game. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus, which means I follow Jesus to know his forgiveness and become like him in how I forgive. I follow Jesus to know his grace and become like him in how I walk in the same power of grace. I, I follow Jesus to know his healing 
and to become like him in expressing the same healing. I follow Jesus to know his ridiculous generosity and become like him in the expression of generosity. I, I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. I want you to just say that statement with me. Okay, just, just say this with me. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. Just say it with me. Here we go. Let's say it. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. Let's say it again. I follow Jesus to become like Jesus. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift. And maybe today you do wonder, like, what, why would I follow Jesus? What, I mean, what's the point? Okay, some forgiveness and whatever. But I, the, the gift is so much bigger than that. You could follow Jesus to become like him. Not replace him. Not become king. Not be, but to be like him. The God who made you, created you, shaped you. Just come on, come, come follow me, and I will, I will make. Witness leads to that kind of likeness. And then likeness includes reaching people. Likeness just includes reaching people. Likeness includes a whole lot of what Jesus is doing in this very moment. Likeness includes reaching people. Do, do you see the end? Remember the end of the phrase? I will make you fishers of men. I, I will make you into my image, but I'm going to actually help you catch people. As part of my image and part of my likeness, I'm going to actually help you Share the gospel, share the power of forgiveness, share the power of a transformed life, share the hope of eternity, share the power of my presence. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you do that. Part of molding you into my likeness is that's what we're going to do. This is Jesus' vision for your, for your life, right? That, that we would be with him, we'd become like him, and we'd help other people. Like, this is vision. One sentence. One sentence. And it starts to shape how, how we do everything, how we engage everything, how we, how we think, how we think about relationships and new relationships, how we respond to people. I, I recently um, met a guy, I mean, recently, it's probably two years ago now, um, I, I met a guy, not a follower of Jesus, not really interested in being a follower of Jesus at this point, but we've just struck up this friendship, and it was kind of through a weird dynamic uh, that we, be, we became friends and, and began to connect some. And we just, we get to converse. We, we, we don't get to converse a lot. We don't live near each other, but we, we get to talk some. And the other day we were talking, it was actually by text. And there's just this, this window inside the text where he, he gets just a little vulnerable in how, like, how bad the week was going for him. He, he used the phrase, this was his phrase, he said, it's just been a week where everybody I interact with is kicking me in the teeth. You ever had a week like that? And people you know kick you in the teeth, people you don't know kick you in the teeth, the driver kicks you in the teeth, I mean, right, it just, it just, you just have those weeks, right? And he was having one of those weeks. And in the moment, I'm like, okay, Jesus, you're, you're still always helping me become like you. What's happening right here? Jesus, just what's happening right here? And again, it's all, it's all in text land in the moment, right? It's all, it's all in text land. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's just time to, to risk a little more vulnerability. Maybe it's time to just give a chance for, for him to get a glimpse that there is a Jesus who really is for him. And so just, just by text, just in our text conversation, just nudge the envelope a little bit before. Uh, like he's... It, He's not a project. He's a friend. He's a person that Jesus is saying to him right now, come and follow me, come and follow me, come and follow me. And for whatever reason, part of the way Jesus is saying that happens to be through me. And you have people like that in your life. Now, I wanna, I, let's just play counterfactual history for a second. Imagine with me for a moment if the disciples, these early Talmudim, had followed Jesus. They went with Jesus, and they're kind of walking down the road. They're getting covered in all the dust. They're, you know, and they're becoming, in some ways, like Jesus, but they leave this part off. Jesus, I, I want to, like, I'm going to become like you because I want to I wanna display your power, and I want to know your power, and I want to benefit from your power. I like all of that, but we're not really going to, like, we're not going to do the last part. We don't, we're not really going to tell any, anybody that for all sorts of, of reasons. Just imagine for a moment if they did that.
you and I aren't here. Right, you, you get it? If the disciples decide to not tell anybody, you, like, you, you understand that? Like, I don't think you get it. If the, if the disciples decide to not tell anybody, you don't hear the gospel. The gospel becomes a 12-person group that dies. If the disciples don't tell anybody, the book of Acts that so many of you love in the New Testament of the Bible doesn't exist. It's not there. There's, we're the beneficiaries, not just of the work of Jesus, but, but of the likeness of a group of 12 people who literally became like him so much that all they could do is talk about the gospel. The only thing they could do with their life is talk about Jesus. You and I are on the receiving end of that. You benefited from that. And yet, I know, like, and especially if we just narrow down to this, to this to our culture, right? It can be so easy to say, ah, yeah, but, but, but I, I don't want to get labeled trying to proselytize everybody. And it's, 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 it's really, you know, it's really more of a, a private thing. And that's, that's for somebody else. And right, I mean, let's not do that. Like, it's private. Like, religion and politics, that's private, Right? Well, we should have kept politics more private, but that's a different day, okay? But here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. This thing of faith, this thing of becoming like Jesus, this thing of walking with Jesus, knowing his salvation, his gift, knowing his dream for your life, it's very personal. It's a very personal matter, but it's not private. It's not private. Never designed to be private. In fact, for those of us who have been following Jesus for a really long time, part of our own frustration, our own spiritual frustration and stuckness, and like we get kind of caught like in this little tar pit thing, we can't quite move, it's because we become allergic to the last half of the division. We've become allergic to the last half of the division. I'm so glad that people for thousands of years have been telling the story, but now that I've got it, I'm going to keep it. it and it's almost subconscious. It's almost like we just kind of fall into that pattern. And here's, here's what, here's what we got to know. Listen, Jesus' vision is the one that's primal for us, and it's the vision that shapes all the other visions. It's the vision that, that gives direction and meaning to our life and allows everything else we do to have meaning. It's part of the vision that allows work to be sacred, like we talked about last week. And it starts with Jesus saying, I just want to be with you. I just, I just want to be with you. And the gift of being with me is that you're going to become like me. And the gift of becoming like me is that you get to shape eternities for people. It's this incredible invitation. This is the, prim this is the primal vision. Isn't Jesus amazing? It's one sentence. It's one sentence. And one sentence I mean, most of us could live in that one sentence our whole lives, <laughs> right? We, we, some of us, we know so much that it's actually hard to absorb that one sentence. But we could live in that one sentence our whole life. Okay, I'm just going to keep following Jesus. And holy smokes, every day I'm going to become more like him? I'm going to live more in his power and more in his gifting and more in his strength and more in his vision and more of his sight and be part of reaching more people with that same love, power, sight, healing, right? Yeah. So, so what do we do? Let's, let's just take, let's be really practical today. Let me, give, let me just give us a few things we do to walk this thing out. Number one is just ask to see. Just ask to see. Jesus, would you help me see what you're already doing in me and around me? Jesus, would you just help me see how you're inviting me? Help me see every day your arm just waving me in. Come on, come follow me. Next part of the adventure, come follow me. Would you just help me see? It's this prayer we've prayed many times around here. Jesus, would you help me see how you see so I could love how you love? Would you help me see how you see so I could love how you love? See me how you see me so I could love me how you love me. See others how you see others so I could love others how you love others. Prioritize learning. Prioritize learning and growing this piece of the puzzle. Prioritize learning and growing. And what it means to, to be one who with Jesus and in the image of Jesus is, is reaching other people. I'm going to give you like a right now opportunity for that. This Thursday, um, Pastor Derek and Pastor Caleb, they're, they're just going to do a workshop, just an as you're going workshop. It's just a way to talk about, look, how do we live this thing out of reaching people? It's actually more simple and fun and natural than most of us often think. And, just want, and I want to invite you to come. Just be a part of that. Just put yourself in those environments where we can say, okay, like let's, 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 let's think about this. Let's think about 
the whole, let's think about the whole of Jesus' vision, which includes, hey, let's go fish for people. Let's go fish for people. What does that look like? But then the kicker is let, let's, let's let learning lead to loving. Let's let learning lead to loving. Learning is, is for the sake of growing in love. Learning, learning is not for the sake of learning. Again, the, the disciples were like, man, I, we could become like that guy. Let, I'll drop the net and I'll go because we could become like him. Hey, he, hear me on this. Look, look at me one more time. Listen to me. The disciples didn't follow Jesus for what they could learn. The disciples followed Jesus for who they could become. The disciples followed Jesus. They became Talmudim for who they could become. Okay, that, that guy, that guy could help us become who he made us to be. That guy, that, that's different. And that's the invitation. So just the, these three, like real tangible, these three things. Come Thursday. Come Thursday night, be a part of that, that workshop piece. At the end of the day, it ends up leading to stories like Lawrence, who we're going to have just the, the thrill of, of baptizing in our next service where people are in her life and people love her with that being the only goal is to, to love her. They, they love her. They're, they're, they're Jesus-like around her, which begins to, to minister and to speak into her life at just the right moments and just the right time and into some of the pains and into some of the losses and into all of the potential. It's an incredible opportunity. You and I get to be part of stories like that. Will you stand if you're here in the room? I want to just seal this up with us. Your life was made to live with a vision, a primal vision, which is the vision of Jesus. And I want to invite you today, maybe for the first time or maybe for the millionth time, to say, I am going to be a person that follows Jesus, but I'm not going to follow Jesus to learn about Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus to become like him. I'm going to follow Jesus to become like, I'm going to take the whole invitation. I'm going to follow Jesus to become like him. It's an incredible thrill. So let me just bless you, seal it up in you. May you go today, church, convinced first and foremost. I want church just to receive this. Jesus Christ, the one who made you, wants to be with you. His greatest thrill right now is being with you. His witness leads to likeness. He, even in this moment, is helping you become more like him. And in that truth and, and in that dynamic living expression, may you go filled with the power of his spirit to be the witness he said we were going to be to be the carrier of the gospel, the story of Jesus that he said we were going to be. May you go in his power and his strength in it. In Jesus' name. Amen, everybody.